Hello everyone and welcome back to another um, podcast, I think. It, 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 it's not really a real video. Um, I just record my voice and I'm probably gonna slap the two pictures I made uh, on this. But um, yeah, so this is a very short uh, improvised video that I didn't really plan like making. Um, but um, basically... Um, I, I, I just wanted to have some fun, I wanted to kind of like uh, poke some fun at something, uh, kind of bring some attention to a video I saw by uh, BPS Customs. So BPS Customs uh, visited Gamers Nexus and they did some overclocking on GTX 580s. So they took uh, two reference uh, GTX 580 cards, strapped LN2 pods to them and then just, uh, well, took them under LN2 and uh, ran some Unigen Valley uh, and then they set themselves like a 30 minute time limit um, and uh, whoever gets the better score at the end of that wins. Now the end result was that, uh, sorry I don't know his name, <laughs> I know Steve's name but I don't know um, the name, I wanna say Brian but I'm not sure, like the, the name of the person that has the VPS Customs channel. Um, he won officially um, because he got a better score, but then um, just after the time ran out, Steve got a better score. So it's kind of a tie, but then Steve said that he, he regards BPS Customs as the overall winner, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was fun to watch. It was a very nice video to watch, like it's just a 30 minute video or something. I, I should just put it in the description, yeah, you, you can just uh, look, up, look up BPS Customs uh, channel and it should be in there. Yeah, it was a very fun video because, well, I mean, this YouTube channel is about overclocking and modding things and sometimes using modding skills to repair things, um, but mostly about overclocking. And uh, one of the things that I love is NVIDIA Fermi, and, well, they overclocked just that. Uh, even extreme overclocking, like uh, LN2, that's very obvious extreme overclocking. And I really liked seeing some content like that because, um, like, they are two very big YouTubers and usually it's in their best interest to do content with new hardware, that's current gen, because people generally don't really care about older stuff, which means less people are going to click on it, which means there's less ad revenue and, um, well, they rely on their ad revenue to make money because YouTube is their job, as far as I know. Um, so generally that's the main reason why we don't really see overclocking content for older stuff. Um, be it just because it's less interesting for like the wider... I wanna say normies, but I, that might be a bit too harsh. <laughs> um, but I mean, it's kinda accurate. Like most people don't really care about overclocking and even less care about extreme overclocking and even less of those care about extreme overclocking on old generation hardware. So it's a niche within a niche within a niche. So there's uh, not that much content about it from big YouTube channels, which is why I really liked that this video exists. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so... <laughs> um, they, they, they said at the beginning of the video, they have no idea what they're doing. Like... Uh, I, I wholeheartedly believe that's the first time ever they overclocked a GTX 580. Well, they went straight for LN2, so uh, A for confidence. Um, but, uh, yeah, so they didn't really do that great. Um, I, I, I guess we can go into uh, the major reasons why they probably didn't do that great. And why I beat them so easily. Um, because, yeah, uh, I, I just couldn't stop myself. Like, this basically started as me just trying to beat the score just for a laugh, posting it in Discord and then people telling me, well, tweet at them or make a YouTube video. So I don't really use Twitter, so here's the YouTube video. Um, so, yes, I will take this opportunity to claim RIPGN and RIP BPS, and I will probably put that in the video. I will I will just do that. I, I will admit that I'm shameless like that. Um, but yeah, I, I beat their score quite easily. Um, I... Yeah, I literally just took my one of my GTX 580s. Uh, it was the Lightning in this case, so I have to admit I didn't use a reference card. I used a custom card that was... Well, it wasn't the Lightning Extreme, it was still a Lightning. It's a card that's 
built for overclocking. So um, my card, just like in the PCB it has, is better than the ones that they were using. I would have loved to use a reference card, but um, yeah, uh, I kind of got rid of all of those. <laughs> like they became e-powers. I have one more reference card that uh, is very sketchy and I just keep around because it's green. Like it has a green PCB, that's why I keep it around, because it looks cool, in my opinion. Uh, the card doesn't, like, the card's dead, basically. Um, it, it was heat gunned, and it worked for a bit, and then it died again. So, yeah, that's the only reference card that's, like, still in one piece that I have. All the other reference cards became e-powers and are now, well, at least two pieces, if not more. Um, so that's why I didn't use the reference card. Um, but it shouldn't really matter that much either, because, uh... Mm. Well, yeah, like, you should be able to easily achieve what I did with the reference card. Like, what what I did to get the score that I got. Um, so I guess let's talk about that. <laughs> Let, let's kind of talk about um, uh, what uh, BPS Customs and Steve could have uh, done better. Um, I mean, they talked about that they're probably going to throw the cards away once the video is over, which... Well, we're throwing away two good, very good e-powers, but, uh, I, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, they, are, they are free to do with their cards what they want. If they want to throw them away, then sure, do it. Um, anyway, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a tiny shimmer of hope that me making this video will mean that maybe one of them will see it, and maybe... Um, just because I put the RIP GN and the RIP BPS in the video title, maybe that will just annoy them just about enough to uh, respond and uh, take the cards for another spin. Um, and I, I have this shimmer of hope that maybe this becomes like a small community. Like, yeah, yeah. like I really enjoyed the um, back and forth between uh, Gamers Nexus and Jace 2 Cents and all the other people that ended up joining in for the... 2080 Ti's and then the 3090's um, and th these videos do pretty well um, even in the wider audience um, and I, I'm pretty sure there's ton of, tons of people that would love to join in on that but not everyone has a 3090 that they can just sacrifice for high internet number um, so things like these GTX 580's are actually perfect for that they're not the newest thing, but who cares? They are just used to generate a number on the internet that's supposed to be slightly higher than everyone else's. You can do that with 10-year-old hardware just as good as you can do it with modern hardware. Um, comparatively, if everyone uses the same card, the numbers are still going to be as competitive as on new hardware. So uh, th that's why I think it would be such a great thing if maybe this becomes like a bigger thing and then there's uh, not just different YouTubers trying to beat each other, but then also their communities, because GTX 580s are cheap, they are very hard to CPU bottleneck, and uh, so they are just readily available. People can just get them for like 20 bucks sometimes, and uh, there is like basically no consequences where you can just go ham on those, you can mod everything on them, you can break them, it doesn't really matter, you can just get a new one. They are so cheap and so numerous and so easy to get. Um, that you don't really have to hold back. You can just go and do everything on them. Like, ju just do all the mods, which, um, yeah, you don't have to hold back because there's no, like, 1,000 plus uh, Euro graphics card at risk. So, yeah, basically a lot of people could join in and I would really like to see that. Um, not just different YouTubers, but also their communities and, and maybe also some other overclockers that are not really part of a YouTube community, but just get wind of it to, like, trying to compete with each other. That would be... Yeah, that would be fun. That would be really, really fun, which is actually the, the main reason why why I'm making this video, because may, maybe... Just, just maybe there's a chance that this will happen. Um, but, yeah. Uh, let's get back to the actual score. So, um... Yeah, I did use a Lightning, not a reference card. The Lightning is a substantially better PCB uh, than the reference card. However, I don't I, like I didn't do anything with it that a reference card couldn't do. Um, so yeah, 
um, the card was air cooled, <laughs> which is uh, yeah. Um, I kind of just beat uh, two people using liquid nitrogen with an air cooled card that wasn't physically modified in any way. Um, but yeah, like they they made um, some mistakes. But let's first go over what settings I use. So. Uh, I use the Lightning's stock cooler, which is an okay cooler, but it's not all that great. Um, I just maxed the fan speed on that. And then I used one thing that a reference card actually can't do. I don't think that I got that big of an... I, I, my, like, if any advantage, I got a very small one from that. So, I was using MSR Afterburner, which they should have done, I'll get into that later. But I used MSI Afterburner, and because the Lightning is an MSI card, uh, it has some more integration. It does not just allow you to change your core voltage like every other card, it also allows you to change your memory voltage and your PEX or display drive rail voltage. So I was able to raise the memory voltage, which uh, depending on what memory chips you have, that, that's the thing that a lot of people overlook. Um, there's different manufacturers that make RAM chips, like VRAM chips, not, like normal RAM chips as well, but in the case of graphics cards, VRAM chips. And even those manufacturers have different revisions of those chips, and they all overclock differently. Uh, I made a video about that a while back, uh, something like, what are uh, memory ICs, um, if you want to know more about that. But uh, basically, depending on whether your RAM chips that you have on your card scale with voltage, increasing the voltage could give you more clock. And coincidentally, on that card, yes, I have memory chips that scale with voltage. Um, so that probably maybe gave me a bit, little bit of extra score. Not that I needed it. I beat it by, like, I think almost a 100 points. And that's the second score that Steve got that was better than the first one. They technically won because it was on a time limit. So, I, I like, yeah, you, you could have easily done this with a reference card. And keep in mind, you can just mod the reference card to get the exact same control uh, as the MSI card can here. So, yeah. And then the uh, PEX display drive rail voltage. Um, I am not sure if that does anything at, like, air cooling. Uh, I've seen if you really, really push the car to the edge on, like, cold water cooling, lowering that voltage can give you a bit more core clock. With that said, I didn't max the core on this card at all. Um, I, yeah, like, I, I, this is one of the cards that I binned. Uh, I know it can do more. I didn't bother looking it up. I just put in a clock that seemed high enough to beat the score, and I ran one pass, and it beat the score by almost 100 points, and I just took the image and was like, well, there we go. So, um, I was just at, a, at 950 uh, megahertz core and 2400 which would be 1200 megahertz actual uh, on the memory. Um, so if you watch the video that they made, you will see that their core clocks are actually pretty similar to mine, if not even lower, I think. I think their core clocks are actually lower than mine. So how did I do that? They use liquid nitrogen, I'm on an air cooler, so how did my core go faster than theirs? Well, uh, V-Core. <laughs> The one voltage that every card can adjust, not just the lightning card. Uh, I just added more VCON. On the image you can see I just added 100 millivolts. I can step that up to 200, but at that point the card would get too hot and, uh, well, the gains would diminish. Uh, you would need a better cooler to run the full uh, plus 200 millivolts. But yeah, um, I was just at like slightly over 1.1 volts, um, which is not high. Like that, that's not high for a Fermi card, like 1.3 or 1.35, that's high, and also very uncoolable on air. Um, but yeah, like 1.1 volts, that's, that, that's like just very slightly higher than what a GTX 480 came with stock. Um, so yeah, not a very high voltage. But GTX 580s really like voltage. They, it, um, it's a thing with all the graphics cards, they really, really like uh, to scale with voltage. Um, especially the 500 series. The 400 series is iffy, doesn't scale that much with voltage, but 500 series, they really like it. And then 600 and 700 series, they like it even more. Um, so yeah, I think the one thing that I did, 
uh, was just increase my core voltage by a slight amount. And um, because these older cards really like to scale with voltage, and because uh, Steve and BPS left their voltage basically, at, so I think Steve didn't touch it at all. And I think BPS raised it by like 10 millivolts, which uh, in the grand scheme of things is basically nothing. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's the main reason why I beat the scores, <laughs> because they just didn't change their voltage. Um, which uh, you should, you should do that, especially when you go cold as liquid nitrogen, because even like liquid nitrogen, even the very new cards scale with voltage. The colder you go, the better your voltage scaling becomes, kinda. Um, so the very like the 3090, 2080 Ti, 1080 Ti, they don't really scale with voltage on ambient. But once you go sub zero, they begin scal scaling with voltage. Um, but these older cards, they scale at ambient just as just fine um, so yeah I think that's the main reason why I uh, beat the scores now um, let's get into what they maybe they could have done better so if they want to challenge my score here <laughs> which admitted is a very low chance there's, there's a there's a very low chance any of them will even see this video and there's an even lower chance that they would choose to respond but if 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 one of you two is watching and you want to to respond because you just can't let this sit on you that the that a random german student just kind of beat your scores hit it with liquid nitrogen by just using a stock card then um yeah um so basically the main reason is uh, you shouldn't be using EVGA precision x1 for a card as old as this um, like Precision X1 became a thing with like the 20 series I think and then before that there was Precision X16 which I'm not really sure I think that became a thing at around like the 600-700 series so the 500 series is older than that tool was um, and specifically the X1 version is like meant for the new Nvidia cards um, that have like power limits, that don't really have direct core voltage control, that have GPU boost. Fermi doesn't have anything. Like the they 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 were thinking that Fermi has that, but Fermi just actually doesn't. Um, Fermi is you give it clock and it run clock, and then there's no but. It just run that clock unless it blows up. That is. So on Fermi, there's no power limit. There's no. Um, clock speed like going around it like it goes down and idle but under load it stays at the clock you give it it's not going up and down depending on temperature or, uh, or whatever like the new cards do it stays at the same voltage under load it doesn't um, change that as well it's just you tell it what to do and it just does um, and precision x1 isn't really meant for those cards it's meant for the older cards so um, potentially the uh, like um, one thing you see in Precision X1, it uses offsets, like the new NVIDIA cards. Um, whereas, like MS Afterburner, which has proper support for the older cards. Um, yeah, that one just... You can see it on the image, you just put the clock in, there's no offset. Um, which, admittedly, that's a cosmetic thing. An offset is just... yeah. Um, but Precision X1 might not have the voltage control working properly, because... Um, so Steve was having some uh, cold bug issues with his card. Um, and at some point he, he said that giving it more voltage actually made it worse. That might be an indicator of uh, Precision X1's voltage slider not working with that card. Um, which is why I suggest just use MSR Afterburner. It, it just works. Um, it works... Just like I never really like the only kind of issue I ever had with MSI Afterburner is that these sliders don't go high enough. <laughs> like sometimes the like sometimes you wanna go higher clock, but the slider just stops and it won't let you set higher clock. So I I use Nvidia Inspector for that. Um, but other than that, I, I never had an issue with MSI Afterburner. So yeah, um, so you should just use MSI Afterburner in in, in my opinion um, because that one has proper working voltage control and, and just it just works and I, I, it's a very reliable very good tool um, and you should just use that instead um, 
and then yeah um I'm trying to think, yeah, one more thing that they couldn't really have done better, like maybe I think they had like a third card that they didn't end up using um I already talked about that memory i c s so um when Steve had his cold bug, like he had issues with like very obvious memory artifacting um so the the memory chips on on Steve's card were like not very happy about the cold and it could be that, uh, well, I suspect he had Hynix chips on his card, and then BPS Customs probably had, like, Samsung chips. Samsung chips are usually fine. Like, they are... Um, usually they are pretty easy to work with. Um, but the Hynix chips, I've had some issues with. So, some Hynix chips just uh, really, really don't like being overvolted, so they scale negatively with voltage, which just gives you less headroom. And also, like I haven't had a Hynix card cold yet, but they might have negative cold scaling, so you cool them down and they actually get worse. Like, you lose clock when you cool them down. It could be that that happened to Steve's card, in which case you would just swap out the card for another one that has, say, Samsung eDie chips, because Samsung eDie... And like I've I've worked with a lot of GTX 580s and Samsung EDI is just the uncontested best memory chip you can have. Uh, then the second wet best would be Samsung GDI, which uh, is just yeah it's slightly worse. It has um, worse temperature and voltage scaling, but still clocks pretty high. And then and then there's the uh, Hynix chips, specifically Hynix AFR, which is very hit or miss. Sometimes it works fine with overvolting and sometimes it just even the slightest bit of extra voltage just makes the card crash and become very unstable and uh, there might also be that negative cold scaling aspect so not that like we don't know <laughs> if the other card that they might have had is uh, one that has better memory chips but that might be one reason why Steve ran into those cold bug problems um, so, yeah, that's the theory of it. Um, if the card has memory chips that just really don't work well with uh, liquid nitrogen, you should probably just swap out the card. Um, so, yeah, that's basically that. Then, um, one more possible source of problems. I don't really think it... it I don't think it could be the source, but they didn't insulate the cards. Like, it was a quick, spontaneous, hey, you want to have a little competition thing, so I can totally understand that they didn't insulate the cards. Um, I did that, I ran cards myself uninsulated, and they were always fine. But maybe, just maybe, there was, like, a drop of water that bridged some contacts, which created weird things. Like, it does happen. I think Jace 2 Sense had that, had that happen with his uh, 3090 Kingpin, where it wasn't properly insulated somewhere, and then, then water got under the chip somewhere, and it caused, like, weird crashes and stuff. Maybe that happened. I don't really think it did, because, like, Fermi, I've ran... Actually, I'm not sure. At least two cards completely uninsulated, and they were both completely fine. Um, so, yeah. Um, but I'm just looking at the time, and we are getting close, dangerously close to 25 minutes. Um, this was supposed to be like an 8 minute video, so I guess I really drifted off again. And before I now sit here for another 30 seconds thinking of something to talk about, I think I should just end it here. So, yeah, go go give the video a watch, uh, it's a really nice video. Uh, really nice that we get some content on, like, all the hardware that's cheap to get, and you can just, like, essentially no consequences, just go full ham on those cards. Really, really appreciate that we get content on those things. I would love for at least one of them to maybe pick up the... I don't know, what what's the expression? Pick up the... I, I can't think of the word. Um, just if one of them wants to go further in this, um, I would encourage you to. It would be really nice, and if maybe we could get something like a little community contest where like people pick up these really old, cheap, uh, easy to get and easy to mod cards just to kind of like have a little friendly competition amongst each other. That would be really nice. I, I know it's probably unlikely, but uh, a man can dream. 
And I think at that point I should end it. So, thank you all for, well, I guess listening. <laughs> Video part is just the two images. So, yeah, thank you all for listening, and until next time, goodbye.